Welcome back to part two of Simon the Zealot. Did you read his letter? Trick question. We don't have any words even spoken in the New Testament by Simon the Zealot, much less a letter or a writing or a gospel by him. Did you read his letter? Listen. That's Simon's name is, he is listening. You yourselves are our letter, written on our hearts, to be known and read by all. And you show that you are a letter of Christ, prepared by us, written not with ink, but with the Spirit of the living God, not on tablets of stone, but on tablets of human hearts. And for me, it's great to have Simon the Zealot. We don't have any words from him, any writings by him, but he himself is a letter written on human flesh by the Holy Spirit that transformed him as he listened to Christ. Look at the saw. Traditionally, this is the iconic image of Simon the Zealot. He was crucified, understandably, upside down, and then sawn through his body. Artists have really given us some gruesome pictures of this. What a path from being a zealot ready to take out enemies, people who didn't agree with his positions, to be either religiously or politically, we don't know exactly. But he was so transformed by Jesus' teaching that he, like Jesus, died forgiving his enemies. This zealot became a zealot of love a zealot of mercy, a zealot of reconciliation, a re zealot of renewal of the whole world. How easy it is for us to get angry, to want the extermination of those who oppose us, especially in the polarized environments which we live today of state and of church, of society and culture. That's not Jesus' way. Learn from me, for I am meek and humble of heart. Put away your sword the sword of Twitter, the sword of television, the sword of snide remarks, the, snore, the sword of calumny and character assassination. There are so many ways to be a zealot today for an ideology. That's not Jesus' way. What a message the transformation of Simon the Zealot means for us. Here he is standing beside Matthew, the apostle. Roman collaborator, tax collector for the Roman system. Exact polar opposite to Simon the Zealot. Just think about where you're placed today in the church with people opposite you, placed today in politics with people against you, against your worldview, your values. Imagine building a community together. And that's the power of grace that transforms. That's the company with Jesus lived with him in prayer. Reading the scriptures, walking to the Mount of Beatitudes like Simon did with Jesus, Simon the Zealot, and hear him saying, blessed are the peacemakers, not those who go into conflict. Put away the sword. Blessed are those who suffer injustice for the sake of the kingdom. My kingdom is not of this world. My kingdom is elsewhere. I could call on the Father to send 12 legions of angels. Put away your sword. The path of humility, of patience, don't pull out the weeds. You'll rip up the good thing, corn, the good uh, crop. The path of patience, of ability to last the long haul, where evil is very present and working very hard, very astutely, very effectively, seemingly gaining lots of ground, but not turning violent ourselves. Jesus calls his disciples from all groupings. Why not pray today for some of those key people who are really opposed to how you see things, religiously, politically, culturally, in values. To, the power of prayer is invincible. Pray, no prayer is ever wasted. And prayer starts by transforming us to be made like the heart of Jesus. Let's not be in the world compromising with the world like the Sadducees, eliminating the world like the Zealots, harsh on the others like the Pharisees, completely withdrawn from the world like the Essenes. Let us be like Jesus in the world, but not of the world. Leaven in the dough, 
salt of the earth, light of the world, the light of charity, of humility, of prayer, of confidence, of readiness to lay down our lives for the salvation of others, to endure whatever it takes with kindness, with goodness. This is the transformation Christ-like. Education is one of the greatest paths of transformation of society. Jesus spent 30 years in Nazareth, quietly working and studying the scriptures. Three years teaching, a few hours on Calvary. The work of education, this is what we need in our world today. Zeal is a great thing, but zeal without virtue causes so much hurt and destruction. Finally, the battle is not ours. St. Paul says that the battle is between the forces of good and evil, the powers of good and evil, spiritual powers. So we should know our place, and our place is of great humility, patience, love, supporting others, encouraging the fallen, kindling the fire in the smoldering wick, breathing back life, nurturing life, a culture of mercy, a culture of encounter, with the other who is different. The greater the zeal, the more urgent the teamwork. Let's bring others together to understand, to grow together. Next week, we come back to go out into the deep alongside Judas Tadeus.